setting off just below Chambers Grove. Going to film a little bit of this wide open river. The upper estuary, as it's called. Right about where the current starts to slow way down. So we're just going to cruise back downstream. The St. Louis River is the largest U.S. tributary to Lake Superior, and it begins near Hoyt Lakes, Minnesota, in Seven Beavers Lake. Not a lot of development here. A few houses here and there. Nothing too crazy. Mostly rustic shoreline. Some minor bluffs. St. Louis River, or Gichigami Sibi, as it's called by the Anishinaabe people, winds its way through Anishinaabe land in Minnesota before reaching Lake Superior. Take a little back channel, back around to where we started. Try and quiet my paddling down here a little bit. The estuary begins just below the Fond du Lac Dam in the Fond du Lac neighborhood of Duluth, Minnesota. It is a drowned river mouth created by a baymouth bar that we call Wisconsin Point and Minnesota Point. Together, these two sandbars create a nearly 10 mile long barrier protecting the estuary from the sometimes turbulent seas of Lake Superior. back bay of the river, joining back up with the main channel. Really, really showcasing the drowned river mouth um, style of estuary that we've got here. Lots of just real wet islands, low vegetation, some trees starting to poke up. Just really great habitat for all sorts of waterfowl and aquatic mammals. And of course, great, great vegetation, especially um, the gnomon or wild rice as it's called up here. The gnomon is the Ojibwe word for Wild rice means a good berry, um, and that's why that's why they migrated here to begin with from the east coast to find the food that grows on water. There is a lot, a lot of work going into the Nomen restoration on the river. In the 1824 map that Captain Bayfield drew of the estuary, he noted on the map that wild rice and rushes line the banks of the river. Now obviously that's not the case anymore, but there's a lot of time and effort and energy and love going in to getting wild rice up and going again on the river. starting to work, I think. We've had some successes, we've had some setbacks, but I think overall it's 
been good. And then back out into the main channel. So we're going to go straight ahead, around to the left a little bit, and back to Boy Scout Landing. So now we're coming into the part of the river where it's going to get really, really wide, much more so than it already is. Um, so wide, in fact, in some points, locals really think they're crossing over the lake. Um, it's still the river, it's the estuary, but it's just that big. We'll see some of those a little bit later. Little Pokegama Bay is just one of many back bays off the main channel of the river being used for monoman monitoring. It lies just upriver from the largest island in the river, Clough Island, and one of the most important islands in the river, Spirit Island, a sacred place to the Anishinaabe, or Ojibwe people, that call this place home. Pokegama River is a very important place for the Lake Superior Reserve. Not only is this the site where many of Superior's K-12 students have been paddling for the first time with reserve education staff, it also serves as our sentinel site and hosts both our weather station and a water quality monitoring station. All of this is situated in the Superior Municipal Forest, the third largest city forest in the country, and is carefully maintained year-round by Hannah Ramage, our fantastic monitoring coordinator. Continuing downriver, it becomes much wider, and this is where the industry has settled on the estuary. The Port of Duluth Superior is the largest inland port in terms of cargo moved annually, and is the furthest inland port in the country. The Bong Bridge in the distance is named for Richard I. Bong, a World War II pilot from Superior, Wisconsin. It can also be seen as the gateway to industry from upriver on the estuary.
Iron ore docks and grain elevators line the banks of this part of the estuary, paying homage to the history of those commodities in the region. They accompany the slips for docking, cargo cranes, and shipping containers that make this place such a bustling harbor. Passing under the Blotnik Bridge, or the High Bridge as locals refer to it, signals entry into the widest part of the river. This is Superior Bay, the last stop on the journey the warm, nutrient-rich waters of the St. Louis River makes before reaching the oxygen-rich, clear, and icy cold waters of Gichigami, or Lake Superior. This is one of the last back bays before the river makes it out to Lake Superior, Bakke Gama Wikwed, or Alois Bay. Historically, this shallow, clay-influenced bay would be full of Minoman each September. Today, Minoman is returning to this bay with the help of researchers, land managers, and tribal leaders, but faces an uphill battle due to consistent predation by Canada geese. Wisconsin Point is the nearly four mile long sandbar that, along with Minnesota Point, protects the river and its inhabitants from the crashing waves of Lake Superior. Once the site of an Anishinaabe village, this place holds a special place in the hearts of many and has been the site of both tribulation and collaborative success. Lake Superior is the largest surface of fresh water on the planet, and the St. Louis River estuary is the largest estuary on it. It is crucial that we take care of these superlative places, and the staff at the Lake Superior Reserve are honored to do so with the help and support of a huge community of partners in the region. <laughs>